Tamron announced new compact zoom lens. Tamron 2240mm f2.8. I know what you want and I know what you're thinking cause 2240mm sounds like everyday carrying a street, a vlogging daily, running a gun style lens which attracts many kinds of people so yeah, I will. So this time Tamron let me use this new Tamron 2040mm f2.8 before the actual release date but I'm not getting paid and I have to return this after this review so as always this review is from my genuine true honest opinion honestly when i saw this announcement for the first time i thought this would be the great option for go-to lens because it covers from very wide 20 mil to a good uh, standard perspective 40 mil and f 2.8 with small and light body so if this depiction is good i feel this lens has a huge potential of being the new era of f 2.8 standard zoom lens so today let's see if this new tamron 22 40 mm f 2.8 is worth buying for you or not and i will show you who this is for quantity makes quality so as always let's start from build quality first of all before we talk about the weight and size and those things i just want to say thank you to tamron for what for placing those zoom and focus ring at the right place before tamla lenses had those rings opposite of other sony e-mount lenses which i always have been complaining about but this and this lens too have them at the same place with other lenses. Finally, the awkwardness is gone. Also, the Tamron lens grip is evolving now. Before, it was dull to be honest, but lately the grip start fitting in my hand really well. So, as you can see, it's so tiny. How tiny is that? It looks like a small prime lens tiny, but it covers from 20 to 40 mil with f2.8 but it weighs only 365 grams and filter thread is 67 mm which has a good compatibility with other e-mount lenses and look how it extends as you zoom in i mean zoom out 40 to 20 mil not much so balance on the gimbal is not a problem but i think the zoom ring is a little light to me you know it's not that it falls by itself but i just feel yeah, you know, I wanted a little bit more pressure on it. Focus ring is just fine. When it's on the camera body, the length, weight, the balance are just perfect. I've been using this lens for a while for everywhere I go, travel, street, mountain, and I feel the lightweight is the justice. When you carry this in a backpack or when you do run in a gun style, this small light body increases your mobility. You know, more mobility means more opportunities to shoot pretty much that's it for build quality it's a very simple lens it doesn't have any switches except this lens utility usb-c where you can customize those rings actually i wanted af mf control switch at least you know what i don't use this utility thing so i just wanted to have af mf instead of that so if you have one of our new tamron lenses do you use this utility thing yeah, comment below. Okay, so no more explanations are needed for build quality, right? It's just good. So let's get the chase. Next, image quality. So first, let's talk about the focal length and the minimum focus distance. 20mm, it's so versatile. It can capture the wide dynamic shot like this. Even when you have a little distance between you and the object, 20mm helps you to get enough space. And when you place the camera on the tripod on the ground for shooting yourself, that shot will be alright as long as you use 20mm. But I found out the distortion at 20mm is not small. You know, it's noticeable but not that crazy. It'll be alright when the Adobe releases the new uh, Tamron 20 40 mil uh, correction you know profile correction something like that you know which you can you know, fix that distortion thing and this goes to 40 mil which gives you the juicy image when you use it with f2.8 you can get a good amount of bokeh but imagine if this was 20 to 50 mil or 20 to 60 mil f2.8 that will generate more creamier melting bokeh but yeah, next time, Tamron. 
and the minimum focus distance is 17 centimeter. This is my favorite photo out from this lens. See, you can see the small detail here and the blur background is just perfect. If you get close to an object like this, you can get a creamy melting background. But honestly, it's, it's not easy to use for general shooting. But definitely this detailed depiction is so good to have. Next, sharpness. I think you already noticed that's from this photo, but don't you feel the crispness in the image? I guess Tamron doesn't want to hear this, so if you're uh, watching this video, just, you know, uh, hold your ears, but this lens has the Sigma crispness in the image. Like strong highlight is not annoying, it's depicted so well. And that makes the total image so sharp and crisp. Look at these black and white photos. The highlights are the main character in them. I genuinely love this highlight depiction. And the small detail is captured so well and lines are so clean. Basically, images are so sharp. But I think far objects tend to get a little soft even though the focus is good. Also, the center point is really sharp but uh, as you go to the edge, it gets a little soft sometimes. But I don't mind those small flowers because the overall image has a crisp clean vibes next color so i am not a tech guy so i can't say very professional technology stuffs i'm just gonna talk my feedback as i shot and color graded them so before i had a not good uh, impression uh, about Tamron color, but this time it looks good to me. I thought it would be a little heavy and saturated color, but actually it's very natural. Skin tone looks good. It didn't require a lot of work at the color grading. I don't see any weird purple thing or broken color. When I pushed the color grading, the response was good. It gives me what I want. Colors are popping out, especially green and orange, but not too much. They're at the right place, uh, you know, right level. So basically I have no complaints. Planes. Nothing is especially great, but also nothing is especially bad. All I can say is Tamron is improving its color so much. So next autofocus, well about this, I am really impressed. As you can see, it's really fast. By the time I stop, the focus is already done. The motion is quick, but not weird. When there are several objects, the focus didn't get lost. It just caught what it's supposed to. When it's a kind of tricky situation, especially when objects are close to each other, it was pretty reliable. Also, when you do this kind of zooming in shot, the focus kept chasing the face. It never missed it. And the focus breathing is not a lot. I think, yeah, it's acceptable amount. But sometimes when it's dark, it took time to focus. So yeah, only that as I use yeah, only those two things were the moment when the focus wasn't good. So about autofocus, I received the Tamron Spirit for video performance improvement. That smooth focus move and the tracking ability are definitely great for video. Especially for people who don't want to take time for focusing and uh, people who have to shoot solo and have to rely on uh, autofocus. So last thing is low light performance. It's f2.8. so it's usable in low light situation. A good light depiction is still alive. But to be honest, it's just the feel I got as I shot and color graded. But I wish I could lift the shadow up a little bit more. Like I wanted the detail to be there. You know, it's not about the noise thing. It's very, very based on my personal experience. But yeah, it's like, you know, usually I set the contrast around 1.3. But with this lens, the shadow get smashed, you know, killing the detail. So I said that, you know, contrast 1.2, uh, which I originally don't want. I wanted to have the really sharp, clean, nice, contrasty, low light image with details left, but those images couldn't stand it. I had a one shadow color ideal in my mind, but I couldn't express it with this lens this time. So yeah, I apologize for the you know feedback uh, based on my very, very personal experience and preference. But anyway, explaining this simply, I am not fully satisfied with low light performance. Okay, that was it. Hope this helps you somehow. Someday. So to me, the biggest plus of having this lens is this focal length versatility. Of course, I knew this could shoot a very wide 20 mil because you know the number said that, but I didn't expect this close detail shot with a good bucket from a dynamic wide angle to narrow tight detail shot. You know, the versatility is the god. The range is so wide, which allows you to handle many situations 
with this one lens. You can vlog easily, like shoot yourself, and when you need a detailed shot, like a B-roll shot, just use 40mm f2.8 and get close to the object, then you can get the nice, tight, detailed shot. And this costs under $700. See? This could be the new era of f2.8 standard zoom lens. Mostly, you know, this thing, like uh, this 24-70mm thing, costs you like around $800, uh, $900, $1,000, G Master, $2,000. And they start from 24mm or 28mm. But this starts from 20mm. And it's smaller, lighter, and inexpensive with a great image quality. Definitely, this lens is really easy to start from. So, as always, who's this is for? All. Anybody. I think I've never said that before. Let me explain. For beginners, this has pretty much what you will need. It covers the standard focal length range and f2.8, 20mm. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you can get 4mm wider or 8mm wider by sacrificing the telephoto side. But think about it. 40mm versus 70 or 75mm. That doesn't make that you know 40mm versus 400mm difference. When you want to extend your sight, walk. Just just walk. You know, physically get close to the object. That will solve this 40mm versus 70mm problem. But for the wide angle side, that physical solution doesn't work sometimes. You know, for example, you're using 24mm and you want to make it a little bit more wider, but there is no space. This 20mm will solve this. So I think choosing 20mm over 70mm works for you most of the time. And it's light and small. I can you know keep saying this over and over, but this makes you wanna you know bring this outside every day, you know, everywhere you go, anytime. So that makes you grow fast and a lot. For photographer and videographer, I guess you're using several lenses like a 1635, 2470, or 85 prime, 50 prime, 70, But yeah, let's delete 2470, 1635, and add this 2240 mil. This works as a wide angle lens plus standard zoom lens. Next to it, after that, let's have some telephoto lens, like a 7200 or 100 Maybe 85 prime is good option too. See, you can reduce the tons of weights, but the variety of shots are not that different. I was like, blah, 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 blah in this video. But actually, there is only one thing I want to say in this video. Don't be obsessed with the quantity. Quantity makes quality get the shooting opportunities as much as you can and uh, generate uh, tons of garbages and mistakes and you know stack it up it'll be a quality sometime okay this is it if you have any question thought about this lens don't hesitate to leave in the comment below so today's fix pretty much it and thank you for watching this video if you like this one show me a thumb and uh hit the subscribe and i'll see you in the next video Like every time I ended shooting, I'm thinking like, oh, what else to say? Do I, do I miss something? But eventually, there, there's nothing to say anymore. So very quietly, very slowly, I go to the camera to, to press the recording button to, you know, end this recording.